Hi, I'm Dr. Lynn Schuchter. Thank you for watching this program. If you've been diagnosed with melanoma, this program can help you and your loved ones know what to expect during your medical care and what treatment options you may have. As you're managing your melanoma, you may be cared for by a team of doctors. This could include a surgeon, surgical oncologist, dermatologist, or a medical oncologist. This is the third in a series of three videos about melanoma treatment. By watching this program and taking other steps to understand your treatment options, you are empowering yourself to be an active participant in your care. Work closely with your doctor and healthcare team. Ask lots of questions and don't be afraid to ask the same questions more than once. Your team is there for you and they want to help. Today, melanoma treatments fall into two broad categories. Some therapies are called standard treatments. This means that they are currently used in medical care. There are also investigational treatments being tested in clinical trials for patients with melanoma. Treatment clinical trials are studies meant to help improve current treatments or determine how well these new treatments work. Although some clinical trials are open only to patients who've not yet started treatment, others are open to patients during or after their treatment. If you want to consider participating in a clinical trial, talk to your doctor to see if there are ones for which you may be eligible. This video provides an overview of both standard and investigational treatments, including chemotherapy, both as a single agent or in combination, immunotherapy, treatment which revs up the immune system, such as interleukin-2, and finally, a surgical procedure called isolated limb perfusion, which enables medication delivery solely to an arm or leg in patients that have in transit or recurrence on the skin. Investigational approaches such as melanoma vaccines, immunotherapy, combinations of therapy, and this new exciting treatment called molecularly targeted therapy will also be covered in this section of the program. Metastatic melanoma, which is also frequently known as stage four melanoma, is a melanoma that has traveled beyond the skin and beyond the lymph nodes to distant places in the body. Although melanoma can spread to any organ, sites where melanoma frequently travels includes the lungs, the liver, and the brain. The goals of treating patients with metastatic melanoma are to improve or reduce symptoms such as pain or shortness of breath. To determine which treatments may be appropriate options for a patient, the doctor will take into account multiple factors. This includes the patient's overall health and age, the sites and number of metastasis in distant organs, how quickly the melanoma is spreading, and the patient's overall wish for treatment. Some patients may choose not to have active treatment, but instead have their doctors observe the progress of the melanoma. And for other patients, surgery to remove a metastatic tumor may be an option, though this is not commonly an option for patients with this stage of disease. One standard treatment for metastatic melanoma is to consider chemotherapy. Decarbazine, or DTIC, is an example of a chemotherapy that's used to treat patients with metastatic melanoma. DTIC has been shown to shrink melanoma in about 10 to 20 percent of patients, though the duration of this response is often brief, lasting only three to six months. DTIC chemotherapy is given intravenously and most commonly given every three weeks. Overall, this is well-tolerated chemotherapy. The most common side effects can be nausea and vomiting, and also we can see a lowering of the white blood cell count, which is a common side effect of chemotherapy. DTIC is the only chemotherapy a drug approved by the FDA for treatment of metastatic melanoma. However, there are other chemotherapy drugs that are used to treat metastatic melanoma. One of these is a medicine known as timazolamide. The brand name is Timidar, and the abbreviation is sometimes TMZ. Timidar is essentially an oral version of DTIC and in clinical trials has been shown to have a response rate of about 20%. Timidar is distributed widely throughout the body and also the brain, and this may be an advantage because the brain is a common site for metastasis in patients with melanoma. 
Since temozolomide is taken by mouth, it is generally very well tolerated. A frequent regimen is that patients take the temozolomide daily for five days in a row, and the course is repeated every four weeks. Side effects may include a mild drop in white, white blood cell count, which can put a patient at increased risk for infection, and there's also mild nausea and vomiting. These side effects can be controlled with standard anti-nausea medications. In some cases, combination of chemotherapy drugs are also used. This includes a new chemotherapy regimen called paclitaxel and carboplatinum. These two agents are frequently combined in patients with advanced melanoma based upon recent clinical trials. These medications are also associated with side effects, include, including a lowering of the white blood cell count and nausea and vomiting. Your doctor and your nurse practitioners and other team members will help monitor the side effects associated with these combinations of therapies. In the past, we've also used chemotherapy combinations often referred to as the Dartmouth regimen. This includes four chemotherapy drugs, and patients are often hospitalized for this combination of therapy. More recent studies have shown that this combination regimen with the Dartmouth regimen doesn't offer any advantage over single agent chemotherapy, so it's not used as frequently in patients with advanced melanoma. Another combination chemotherapy regimen is known as the CVD regimen, cisplatinum, vinblastin, and DTIC. Similarly, this combination therapy has not been shown to be superior to single agent DTIC, so is not used as commonly today. Aldisleucin, known as interleukin-2, is a potent activator of T cells. Interleukin-2 is also approved by the FDA for treatment of patients with metastatic melanoma. Because of the side effects associated with interleukin-2, which can be quite serious and sometimes fatal, this treatment should be restricted to very select patients and administered by professionals who have a lot of experience in delivering interleukin-2. Though interleukin-2 does have a lot of side effects, in select patients, the response rate can be quite dramatic, and there have been patients who have lived many years following interleukin-2 therapy. So this is an option for patients with metastatic melanoma. When interleukin-2 is given, patients require hospitalization. It's generally given intravenously through the vein over a five-day period, followed by a rest period of seven to 10 days for patients to recover and then another five days of the interleukin-2 infusion. Patients can receive this therapy on a repeated basis every eight to 12 weeks with a maximum of about five courses of treatment. The most common side effects from interleukin-2 include low blood pressure, diarrhea, and something known as a capillary leak syndrome where patients develop a lot of swelling and edema, skin rash, kidney function can be affected. As I mentioned earlier, these side effects are manageable but require a dedicated team to get patients through the side effects of interleukin-2. These side effects are also completely reversible once the interleukin-2 therapy is discontinued. And finally, your doctor may mention to you a, a treatment known as biochemotherapy. This combines three chemotherapy drugs plus immunotherapy, including interleukin-2 and interferon. This is another option for patients with stage four metastatic melanoma. Hello, my name is Dr. Yorgos Karakousas. Isolated limb perfusion, referred to as ILP, is a surgical procedure for a specific type of melanoma called intransit metastases. With intransit metastases, the melanoma spreads along the lymph vessels in the skin forming many nodules in the skin or under the skin. If this occurs in an arm or a leg, ILP can be helpful. In ILP, the surgeon puts tubes into the blood vessels going to and from the leg. A machine can then circulate high doses of a chemotherapeutic drug through the arm or leg without causing side effects in other parts of the body. This is a particularly exciting time in melanoma research with several new treatment approaches for patients with stage four metastatic melanoma. There are two new approaches that are being tested in clinical trials. 
One form of therapy is immunotherapy, again, trying to rev up the immune system so that patients' melanoma is recognized by the immune system. This includes several vaccine clinical trials that are undergoing development. And secondly, a whole new way of treating melanoma, which is a concept known as molecularly targeted therapy. Let me begin with that treatment first. In patients who have melanoma and in other cancer, there can be a mutation or genes that are broken in a patient's melanoma. These broken genes known as mutations drive the melanoma cells to grow. And so what we're looking for now is therapy that targets that broken gene. And so what's happening now in melanoma is that we've designed therapies that specifically target that broken gene in a patient's melanoma. Let me give you an example. In approximately 40% of melanomas, there's a mutation in a gene called BRAF. This is a gene that's broken or activated, and as a result of this mutation, cells are rapidly dividing. And so there are therapies that specifically target this broken BRAF gene. The first agent that's looking particularly exciting is known only by numbers and letters now as PLX4032. This is a pill that has exquisite sensitivity for targeting the broken BRAF gene and essentially puts the brake on the melanoma cells. In ongoing clinical trials for patients who have BRAF mutant melanoma, patients with advanced melanoma, the shrinkage rate ranges between 50 and 80 percent. This is unprecedented activity of a therapy in patients with advanced melanoma. So in these studies, we sample a patient's melanoma, we test to see if the gene is broken, and then enroll patients on these new targeted therapies. The PLX4032 is just one example of new targeted therapies for patients with melanoma, and there are a number of new drugs that are ongoing to explore targeting this broken gene. What we also know is that BRAF is not the only gene that's mutated or broken in melanoma. Other pathways are abnormal or stimulated in melanoma. And ongoing clinical trials are exploring combining targeted therapies, targeting two pathways that may be abnormal. So this may be a very important option for patients who are diagnosed with melanoma. You heard earlier that there were several different types of melanoma. An example of melanoma that incurs, occurs in older patients known as lentigo malignant melanoma. This type of melanoma has a broken gene known as CKIT. Again, that broken CKIT gene drives melanoma cells to grow, and there are a number of trials that are being uh, developed which target the broken CKIT gene. For example, imatinib, also known as Gleevec, which is a miracle drug in patients with a rare form of leukemia known as CML and in some types of stomach cancer. This new therapy shuts down CKIT and also looks to be uh, an important way of managing patients with melanoma that has a broken CKIT gene. So the future in melanoma therapy is to test patients to see if they have a broken gene and then enroll them on the right clinical trials with these new targeted agents. For the most part, these therapies are given as a pill, they're given chronically, and have much fewer side effects than traditional chemotherapy. Patients may experience a skin rash or some diarrhea, but they don't lose their hair and don't have the significant nausea or vomiting associated with traditional chemotherapy. We're very optimistic about this new approach, this molecularly targeted approach for patients with advanced melanoma. Another important new area of investigation is new immunotherapies to treat patients with metastatic melanoma. There are new vaccine strategies, so more powerful vaccines that more effectively stimulate the immune response. There are a series of ongoing trials looking at melanoma vaccines. Another new important area is a new therapy called anti-CTLA-4 antibody. So when the body's immune system is, is activated, we both have stimulators of the immune system, and at the same time, a break is put on the immune system. This new approach with anti-CTLA-4 antibody basically takes the break off and allows for a fuller immune response. Therapies that are currently in undergoing clinical trials include a medicine known as ipilimumab. We call this IPI for short. And this therapy has been shown to substantially reduce melanoma size in patients with advanced melanoma and also to prolong survival. 
So ipilimumab is a new therapy that we're very excited about. Ipilimumab is currently undergoing clinical trials, but we hope that it's going to be FDA approved shortly. Patients do need to be monitored closely if they're receiving ipilimumab therapy. Because this therapy does augment the immune response, one of the main side effects is that the body's own immune response can attack the person. And so patients are monitored very closely for something known as an autoimmune complication. So this is an important new therapy, but again requires close monitoring by your physicians and by your healthcare team. There are other agents that are working like ipilimumab that are also undergoing clinical trial. And so new ways to really rev up the immune system to tackle melanoma are undergoing a clinical investigation. Finally, combining targeted therapies with immunotherapies is an important strategy. And we think there's lots of rationale for bringing these two therapies together and further improving the survival and outcome for patients with metastatic or advanced melanoma. So you've heard about a number of new approaches for the management of patients with metastatic melanoma or advanced melanoma. A clinical trial may be the right treatment option for you, and it may be the first therapy that's offered to you by your physician or by your healthcare team. This is the way that advances are made in the management of patients with melanoma, and some of the most exciting active agents are only available by your participation in a clinical trial. For more detailed information about melanoma, visit penmedicine.org slash Abramson, and in the search field, type in Focus on Melanoma Conference. You will find helpful videos and podcasts from Penn's annual Melanoma Conference. We hope you have found this overview of treatments for metastatic melanoma helpful. Remember to reach out to your healthcare team if you want to understand your current melanoma treatment or learn more about other options that may be available to you.